The Cold War Shelter, Hack, Modern Builders. Forgot and why it still beats any high-tech bunker today. If you've spent enough hours crawling through Cold War engineering archives, those dusty corners of history where paranoia met brilliance, you eventually hit a moment that snaps you awake. You start realising our modern concrete jungles, with all their gadgets and shiny systems, are embarrassingly fragile. Meanwhile, sitting quietly under hillsides from Canada to Northern Europe, there are Cold War shelters still bone-dry, perfectly temperate and structurally solid after sixty brutal winters. And the wild part? Their secret isn't thicker concrete, exotic alloys, or anything remotely futuristic. The trick is far simpler, almost annoyingly clever, and it might be the smartest survival hack ever engineered. Let's dig into it, because this is the kind of history that whispers instead of shouts, and survivalists today are finally circling back to it. The real backbone of long-life underground shelters wasn't brute force construction. It wasn't Cold War funding. It wasn't even the arms race. It was the philosophy of working with the earth instead of fighting it. That single shift, choosing to partner with soil, moisture and pressure rather than trying to seal them out, allowed certain Cold War bunkers to outlast modern sealed capsule bunkers by decades. Engineers in the 1950s had lived through World War II rebuilding efforts and understood something modern designers often forget. The enemy isn't just blast shock or radiation. It's time. Time destroys concrete. Time corrodes steel. Time moves soil and forces water into every crack you fail to respect. Cold War engineers confronted that reality with the kind of quiet genius serious historians love studying. They built shelters that didn't struggle against nature. They cooperated with it. The first thing they mastered was pressure, not the psychological kind, the physical kind that decides whether a bunker stays dry or turns into a cold, damp tomb. Moisture always moves from warm to cold, from high pressure to low pressure, and from restricted areas into open paths. Instead of sealing bunkers into airtight vaults the way many modern do-it-yourself designs do, Cold War engineers built pressure relief zones into the soil around their structures. These weren't flashy. Most visitors don't even notice them. But they're the reason some bunkers remain immaculate today. Across parts of the Northern Hemisphere, shelters were wrapped in what you could call intelligent earth layers. Picture, if you will, a shell where the outermost zone was soil. The next was coarse gravel, and inside that sat the concrete shell. This gravel wasn't just filler. It was a pressure and moisture buffer. It allowed water to flow freely outward instead of pressing inward. It slowed freeze-thaw cycles so the concrete didn't suffer sudden temperature shocks. It equalised pressure between the bunker interior and the soil outside. In practical terms, it meant no sweating walls, no creeping mould, no decades-long war between concrete and the elements. Take the Scandinavian double berm system, for example. Two layers of earth separated by a thick gravel bed created a thermal blanket that breathed. Decades later, these shelters remain shockingly dry, while newer ones, built without those passive layers, crack, sweat, and slowly crumble. And here's the good news. You can use this same trick today, even on something as small as a root cellar or storm shelter. Anyone digging into a hillside or pouring a foundation can widen the trench by a foot or two and fill that buffer with angular gravel. You're giving moisture a place to go, 
You're relieving hydrostatic pressure. You're letting nature help you instead of choke you. That's how you build something that lasts generations, not just seasons. The second major insight was thermal intelligence. Cold War engineers understood that the Earth is an incredible insulator, but only if you allow it to breathe. When you trap moisture inside that thermal mass, you create a slow-motion disaster. But when you design for gentle airflow, you create stability. This is why so many Cold War shelters use ventilated earth coverings. Not just soil dumped on a roof, but layers, stone, sand, porous material carved into a kind of massive insulating lung. Heat and moisture could migrate slowly, predictably. The result was a bunker that stayed cool in summer and warm in winter without stressing the walls or relying on mechanical systems that would eventually fail. Modern builders can copy this easily. If you're covering a workshop, cellar or storage room with earth, lay a permeable drainage mat or gravel layer before piling the soil on top. A simple three-layer system, wall, gravel drainage layer, compacted soil, duplicates the old Cold War pattern using modern materials. You don't need to pour a fortune into it. You just have to respect physical laws. And then there's ventilation, the part most people overlook until it's too late. Many modern prepper bunkers go for the sealed vault fantasy. It feels safe until humidity starts climbing, steel frames rust, and wooden supports start smelling like a forgotten basement. Cold War engineers already solved that problem with passive airflow. One low intake near the floor, one higher exit shaft. The natural temperature difference between those two points triggers a slow, constant convection loop. No electricity, no fans, no moving parts. And yet the air inside stays dry, oxygenated and consistent year-round. If you're building a cellar or emergency hideaway, this is the system to copy. You can run PVC pipes through the berm, shield them from pests with simple grates, and, well, just let physics handle the rest. It's elegant because it's honest. It acknowledges that humans will not maintain a shelter perfectly for 50 years, but nature will maintain it if you design it right. Here's the real lesson, the one Cold War engineers left us like a quiet survivalist inheritance. Durability isn't about strength, it's about harmony. When a structure works with soil, temperature, airflow and time, it becomes practically immortal. When it fights those forces, it loses. If today's survivalists, homesteaders and history buffs want a bunker, or even just a long-lasting earth-covered structure that stands the test of decades, this is the pattern to follow. Not the movie version of a bunker, the real one. The one that outlived an age obsessed with Armageddon. If you want more deep historical engineering secrets, broken down into practical, usable knowledge for modern life, make sure you subscribe, share this episode, and help grow a community built to last, just like the shelters we study.